Hello, you're watching the Tropics Topics of September the 10th, 2018. Today is, climatologically speaking at least, the most active day of the hurricane season. And oh boy, is this hurricane season abiding to that. We have three hurricanes active and a separate uh, disturbance that may become our next tropical system. Uh, first off, you have Hurricane Florence posing the biggest threat to land right now. Winds of 140 miles per hour. It's a Category 4 hurricane now, a lot stronger than it was yesterday. I have Hurricane Isaac, which is barely a hurricane, Category 1, with winds of 75 miles per hour. Hurricane Helene, which is curving on out to sea, won't impact any more land areas, Category 2 right now. And Invest 95L, which is currently located just off the coast of the Yucatan and has a 60% chance of development in the next five days in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a wide shot of all the activity going on right now. Uh, we have Florence, Isaac, Helene, and the Creepin' the Servants. We'll start off with Isaac today, as you can see here in this uh infrared loop of the storm. It wasn't looking so great earlier today. Uh, it's recently gotten a bit better organized with this convective burst that has occurred over the center. However, recent ATCF data has shown that this thing has weakened to a tropical storm and the NHC might abide by that for the next advisory. So Isaac may no longer be a hurricane, but it is still certainly a pretty decently strong tropical cyclone as it continues to move off towards the west and eventually may impact the Lesser Antilles later on down the line. Uh, we can see that here in this water vapor shot that Isaac may have some troubles going up against it. We're going to have this ridge that's going to build in behind Florence that's going to dip down into this portion of the basin and it's going to start shearing uh, Isaac eventually out of the north. So we're going to have a little bit of northerly shear on the storm that could weaken it quite a bit as it moves towards the Lesser Antilles. Now, the question is where in the Lesser Antilles does it move? Well, the stronger it is, the farther north it's going to go, because we can see here in these spaghetti models, some of these that curve right up here towards the north are either statistical or they are showing the storm being a bit further, um, bit, being a bit stronger, excuse me, than some of the other models. So these like to curve it up on out to sea as Florence kind of dips in and the ridging over um, this portion of the basin kind of decreases, it's going to eventually curve on out to sea. The weaker solutions, such as you know the European and the HWRF, kind of keep it more in the HMON, keep it in the Caribbean, and make it trail off towards the west. The National Hurricane Center abides by this uh, second group, the the Euro camp, basically, bringing it into the portion, this portion of the main development region, off towards the Lesser Antilles, and will likely impact those islands by Thursday. And it might not be a hurricane at this time. In fact. It, the fact that it's already a tropical storm might mean that this forecast might be significantly different than the next update, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. And then moving into the Caribbean and eventually likely to dissipate if it does move into the Caribbean uh, sometime this weekend and then the remnant wave will continue west into Central America or the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, so that's Isaac. Uh, we're going to skip Helene today because it's not a threat to land, but we are going to discuss uh, Invest 95L, which has uh, been designated today in the Northwestern Caribbean. This is a very kind of large area of just scattered convection. Uh, the, currently the low level center is located somewhere in this area right here. And this is going to progress out towards the Northwest because we have this pretty thin trough axis right here, which is currently shearing it off towards, is shearing all these convection off towards the Northeast. You can kind of see that here, the, all the actual vorticity is centered down here, but all the, most of the convection, at least, you know, what's left of some of the convection at least, is located off towards the northeast over Cuba, and this is because the trough over here is shearing it. Now this trough is pretty weak, so it's going to eventually kind of fall apart. This part, this portion over here, the southern uh, part of the axis, is going to cut off and back towards the southwest into the Bay of Campeche, which will allow 95L to have a route towards the northwest, and eventually it could become a threat to either Tamaulipas in northern Mexico, or what's more likely in this instance, uh, southern Texas. As we can see here in the European model, uh, this is where the 95L would be on this run. This is Friday morning just off the coast of Brownsville as a very, as a strong tropical disturbance, not quite yet a depression, uh, but it could become one as it moves into southern Texas. As we can see here, this is Saturday, more wound in appearance, and this is a tropical depression in the land, so it could have a chance to become a tropical storm right before landfall, but it might not have enough time to really gain a whole lot of strength. Uh, but either way, there's going to be some more rainfall coming to this area. And recently, Texas has been getting quite a bit of rainfall. And with the drought conditions that are still somewhat in place of the state, this would only help to 
benefit the drought and eventually benefit the drought relief and cause more rainfall in this area. Uh, and, the, and if this were to gain, gain a name, this would gain the name Joyce, assuming that another uh, disturbance up in the North Atlantic doesn't form first, uh, this would gain the name Joyce if it does develop at all. Uh, again, 60% chance of the chance of development on that one over the next five days and currently the European model is the main model that supports uh, this thing and I think that it, right now it has the best handle on it as well. So moving on to Florence, the main you know the main attraction I guess you could say uh, rapidly intensified today to a category 4 hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour and the pressure dropped significantly this thing rapidly intensified uh, this morning and overnight and is now a mature hurricane. Now you can see though here in these last few frames that it's not looking so great. Uh, we can see that recon passed through passed through the storm uh, just now and found that the pressure rose about three millibars in between passes. Now there could be some slight tweaks here and there depending on how strong the winds were at the time the drop zones were dropped uh, but regardless the storm was beginning to weaken slightly as the, as, um, the plane threw. Uh, flew through. And you can see here in this microwave pass here that uh, Florence doesn't really have a solid inner core just yet. We can kind of see here that there's a little bit of a primitive eyewall structure. This should be the inner eyewall and it's not fully closed yet but instead it's surrounded by this much larger band uh, that's trying to form an outer eyewall. So, so the storm is currently undergoing an eyewall replacement cycle. Now this weaken the storm uh, enough to the, to the point where it might not be as big of a threat to you know the Carolinas as has been forecast for the for the next couple of days, not necessarily because this thing intensified so rapidly and because the core is still it's not small anymore, but it's a bit larger. Because of that, it might not lose any intensity, uh, but it is likely to just inflate the storm's size because when IRL replacement cycles happen, not only do the storms themselves become larger, but their wind fields becomes larger as well even if the wind speeds themselves aren't affected so this could mean that more areas uh, in the eventual landfall area could be impacted by the storm uh, so here's a just a general view of, of the whole situation right now here's florence right here um where i circled and we have this ridge that's going to be uh, is currently building over this portion of the basin that's going to be influencing a pretty strong uh east southeasterly flow that's going to steer the storm towards the West northwest and eventually northwest, and will likely impact somewhere between um, somewhere between the northern coastline of uh, South Carolina or what's the most likely center at this point, somewhere in North Carolina, whether that be in the Wilmington area or the Outer Banks. A likely landfall is going to happen in North Carolina by Thursday, Thursday night, or potentially even on Friday. Now the question is, some of the models recently have been. Some have been moving it straight inland, and most still do, but some of them have been kind of curving off towards the north and kind of meandering it offshore a little bit before curving it inland. This is going to be because there's going to be another ridge that's going to be building out here over the Great Lakes region, and this is going to kind of act as a block for Florence. And because we're going to have another this ridge over here that's going to be initially forcing it towards the northwest, this is going to be dipping down a little bit. So... We're going to have Florence in somewhere in this general vicinity, most likely. We're going to have a ridge down here and a ridge over here. So the storm is likely to get trapped in between the two flows. We're going to have one here coming out of the north and another one here coming out of the south. So the storm is likely not to move anywhere. And where it stalls is going to be pretty important because it could stall offshore. Then the most likely... Uh, scenario is that it stalls further inland into North Carolina or Virginia somewhere in this area if it even stalls at all some of the models just show it moving very slowly across the area and not really coming to a full halt but we'll have to see on that and as for the models that kind of meander it offshore before turning it inland those models are also showing that there could be really high rainfall totals more focused more focused on the outer banks and over towards the Pamlico Sound rather than over here in central North Carolina and Virginia, like some of the other forecasts are saying. Uh, and again, we're not just looking at one model, we're looking at many. And you can see here in the spaghetti plot forecast, we can see pretty much every model is now focused in on a North Carolina landfall at this point. It looks like a given that we are going to see Florence make landfall 
likely as a Category 4 hurricane uh, before North Carolina. Now, is it possible that it, may, that it strengthens in this area to reach Category 5 intensity? Sure. Will it make landfall intensity? It's very unlikely, but it's, but it's currently forecast that it will be a Category 4 or strong Category 3 hurricane at landfall. The difference does not really matter as you're going to see a major hurricane regardless of how strong it actually is. And not shown in this graphic is the European model, which has been very consistent on bringing the storm into this portion of the Carolinas, uh, specifically North Carolina. But we can see here that these ensembles are all over the place across the Carolinas, even some as far south as Georgia. So I think we can pretty safely rule that solution out at this point. So really, we still don't know exactly where the landfall is going to be, but we have a pretty good idea that's going to be somewhere in between, say, Charleston and Norfolk, Virginia, most likely scenario between Wilmington, North Carolina, and Cape Hatteras as the most likely landfall point for Florence. You can see that here in the National Hurricane Center forecast, the storm is going to be moving towards the west-northwest and then straight northwest, and will likely make a landfall in North Carolina sometime Thursday evening, Thursday night. Um, and as it does so, it's going to be at, as big or even bigger than this wind field currently shown here. Just translate this right here over North Carolina, and you can see that there's a pretty wide extent of tropical storm force winds that extends inland, and even hurricane force winds that could ex even extend a bit farther inland. Hurricane force gusts could certainly extend inland. And we can kind of see that here uh, in this graphic here from the National Hurricane Center. There's currently um, a 90% chance plus that we are going to see tropical storm force winds in this portion of North Carolina, and they are likely to arrive Thursday morning. So even though the, the, the core of the hurricane will likely be over here by this time, you're still going to see the storm, the um, winds, the tropical storm force winds move inland, even though the storm is all the way out here. And then by the time it's actually over, about to make landfall, you can kind of see it's extended much farther inland from, you know, inland into eastern Georgia, up into Basically, up into the Delmarva Peninsula is where tropical storm force winds are likely to arrive. And you can see the percentages here coded um, down here and in the graphic. And wind is not going to be one of the main threats. The main threat is going to be both rainfall and storm surge. Rainfall here predicted from the WPC showing a wide swath of 10 inches of rain through North Carolina up into Virginia with isolated totals up to 15 inches. This could be a bit underdone. If the, if the storm actually does make landfall, these rainfall totals may be a lot higher than this. Uh, some models are even showing that it could be 30, 40 inches of rain. Is that out of the question? No. Is it unlikely? Maybe, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. Uh, storm surge is going to be a big problem as well. As with any major hurricane making landfall, you're going to have issues with storm surge. As we can see here from the Coastal Emergency Risk Assessment website, we can see here that even that this is based on the National Hurricane Center forecast right now, as we can see as it moves inland uh, Thursday night, we can see that this area of coastline between Wrightsville Beach to, you know, uh, Moorhead City is going to be inundated with, you know, five plus feet of storm surge. And even in this area between Surf City and Emerald Isle, there could be up to 10 feet of inundation, which is significant. Even up here in a portion of the southern Pamlico Sound, you could see significant storm surge as well. 10 feet, not out of the question in this area, assuming that Florence is in this exact position. Again, this cone can change. Remember, the storm's track does not have to be this exact center line. It could be anywhere within the cone. This is not a damage swath. This is The cone represents anywhere where the center of the storm can actually track. So it could track anywhere from basically Charleston, South Carolina, to the Outer Banks, or even up here in the Delmarva. We still aren't too sure exactly where landfall is going to be, though again, we do have a likely um, landfall point around between Wilmington and Moorhead City uh, for Hurricane Florence as a Category 4 or Strong Category 3 hurricane. All right, so that's it for the Atlantic today. Again, uh, Hurricane Isaac is going to be steadily weakening as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. will probably be just a big rainmaker for, the, for that area. And Florence has approached the Carolinas. Um, on Thursday is going to be probably an extreme event. Uh, make sure that you have all your preparations ready. Stay tuned to, the to your local National Weather Service office for the latest information and make sure that all your preparations are ready to go by this point. Evacuation orders should be issued 
by tomorrow as well as hurricane watches and storm surge watches. And we also have the disturbance in the Caribbean that will move towards Texas uh, late this week. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to stay weather alert during this time.